Hey y'all, so we are super excited about today's YouTube video. We thought it would be fun since we're all quarantined to do a YouTube live stream today. So this is gonna be super casual, but what I'm gonna do is walk through a quick little sketch of peonies. So what I have here is just a picture I found on the internet and I'm just gonna work from that and kind of break down the forms and talk through my process with you. So we are going to be using Basics Acrylic Paint. Um, I'm gonna work pretty quick. So if you can keep up, that's great. If not, this video will be on YouTube so you can paint at your own speed um, at your leisure. So I'm gonna start with um, just a dark magenta, and this is Basics Liquitex, and I'm just gonna start doing a sketch here on my canvas. I have um, a round paintbrush. This is a number eight paintbrush. It's my good and faithful paintbrush. I use it all the time. It has tons of paint on it. It's old, I love it. Um, my favorite one ever, so it's just kind of a medium round paintbrush. And what I'm gonna do is just draw three rough circles to start with. So looking at my um, canvas here, I want to do one kind of a larger peony in the top right-ish corner. And this is gonna change and evolve as I go. This is called the underpainting and I just do this very quickly and let it um, be very natural and I'm not worried about it being perfect. So I'm gonna do a second kind of maybe a little bit smaller off to the left of that one. And then maybe one more, and this one's gonna be kind of turned downwards. Okay, so that is the start of my peonies. From there, I'm going to just draw loose stems going to be in a vase. I'll draw just some straight lines for where our vase is going to be. Okay, so from here, peonies are one of my absolute favorite flowers. I love how they have just tons and tons of petals that all cup the center of the flower. So what I'm gonna do is just start drawing these petals and they're all going to be just like cupping the center of my peony. So from here, I wanna stagger in almost like a brick pattern and I'm gonna come outward. I'm gonna just keep building this peony up. And then I want one petal kind of opening wide on either side. kind of like a loose, very loose sketch of a peony. I'm gonna do the same thing on this peony on the left. I have my petals kind of cupping the center. This one's gonna be a little bit tighter, so not quite as large, but I'll have one petal kind of drooping down. And I can make adjustments to that as I go, I'm not going to be completely married to this sketch because I want to allow myself flexibility as the painting evolves. So this one, I want the base of my peony at the top instead so that it's turning downwards. And then do the same thing, just kind of cupping the center. Okay, so that's a rough sketch. From here, I'm going to add in white and kind of start defining those petals a little bit. So I have a dark magenta and a titanium white. So if you're still joining in, don't worry. Um, we are going to have this video posted on YouTube afterwards. So you will be able to view it at your leisure. Um, but for now, I'm just going to work through this rather quickly and then you can go back and um, paint it later. 
All right, so from here, I'm going to mix in some white. And this is really just for me to start defining that shape. I'm filling in the petals. I, I want them to be lighter as they go out and towards the center, they're going to be darker. So I do this very loosely. I want more magenta towards the center. I like to work really quick with acrylic paint because it dries really quickly. So I don't like to give it a lot of time to dry on my canvas. There are extenders that you can buy, um, different mediums to lengthen the time that it dries to allow you more flexibility on your canvas. Right now I'm just working with water as my extender. So I'm just filling in those petals. We'll define those shapes even more as we go. Like I said, I want, I still want to be able to see these. Another nice thing if you work quickly with acrylics is you um, can kind of blend it on the canvas so you don't have to mix as much. So it looks like we have people tuning in from all over the place. I shout out to Beth in Chattanooga, Tennessee. And um, we have someone joining in from Ontario, Canada. So that is awesome. Hope y'all are staying safe where you are. All right, so I wanna just keep going with this white right now. And what I like to do is kind of work from the tops of my petals then and blend it downwards. So I'm using kind of the top of my paintbrush, like the very tip, and I am just like doing really light brush strokes. Kind of blending it into that darker magenta that I have on the bottom. So I'll do that same thing using white, this is just a quick sketch of peonies. So I'm not trying to be perfect. I want to keep it kind of abstract and loose. Kind of just lightly dancing your brush on the canvas. Keep it really light. I don't like to be too heavy handed while I'm painting. I try and stay loose. Oh my goodness, we have someone joining us from Nice, France. I would love to visit Nice. Maybe as soon as this whole coronavirus is over, I can come and paint with you <laughs> where you're at. That sounds like a dream. Okay, so again, I'm kind of just like blending and like dancing that brush downwards. We can add in more colors as we go, but right now, Sorry, I'm gonna jump kind of in front of the camera. It's hard because I'm painting like off to the side of this, so I may have to block the camera a little bit to make sure that I'm liking the way my painting is looking. Hopefully you all can see that where you're viewing from. Okay, so from here I'm gonna wash my brush and I just wanna give that like a second to dry and I'm gonna paint my background color. Um, depending on what paints you have, um, you could really choose any color that you want for background. 
I think with peonies, um, a dark background looks awesome. I love like a dark navy or a dark gray. Um, I want this one to be a little bit lighter, like really cheerful. We all need some uh, happiness and cheer at this time. So what I wanna use is kind of a light aqua color. So I am going to work with basics and this is a bright aqua green. And I'm gonna mix that with a little bit of white paint. And for this, just for the sake of time, I'm going to switch to a bigger paintbrush. So this is an angle shader and it is three fourths of an inch. Um, again, this is one of my favorite brushes. I love the angle on it because it allows a lot of flexibility when you're painting. You can go in and get details, but you can also just fill in large blocks of space really quickly. Um, so I'm going to use this angle shader right now and I have this bright aqua mixed with white and I'm just going to start really just quickly filling this in. And again, this is just a quick sketch. I love to paint in a lot of layers over many sessions. So I find that the more layers that you add to acrylic paint, the better it looks. So what I would typically do is start with this kind of base layer and then come back maybe in a day or two and add on top of it and really just keep painting on top of the same painting until I get it to a point where I feel like it's done. Um, I get the question all the time, like how long does it take you to finish a painting? And it honestly, it varies so much. Sometimes I'll sit down and crank out a painting and like, six hours and then sometimes it'll be a month working on the same piece. So there's really no, um, it's not really scientific, it's more of a feeling. So I'm just blocking in this background. Again, I don't like to be totally married to my background color because I know that it could change. Like if I get to the end of my painting and I'm like, hmm, that would look better gray, I will paint over the entire background. So for now, it is this kind of bright aqua green, but that could change. Also, when I'm doing my backgrounds, this I feel like is the perfect time to kind of shave some of the pink off these flowers and to um, change the shape. Like if I'm like not, not loving the way some of the petals went when I'm doing the backgrounds, I'll go in and paint on top of them and cut into them and kind of make them more elegant. The great thing about acrylic paint is it is a very forgiving medium. So if you're just getting started, a lot of people will start with watercolor. I find watercolor is a lot more difficult than acrylic. Um, it's just not as forgiving as, as a medium. So I recommend getting started with acrylic painting and experimenting from there. Okay, so we have our background filled in. From here, I want to switch my paintbrush. I'm going to go back to that round paintbrush that I started with. And I want to do a little bit of the darker. So I'm just going to use the aqua like straight out of the tube right now. And I just want to fill in where my water is eventually going to be. So I'm known to start a painting like this and think, okay, I'm gonna have a clear vase. And then if I get to the end of it, I'm like, no, I'm not feeling a clear vase. I'll just paint over the whole thing and it'll be stripes or it'll be a ginger jar. Um, so 
I try and say be really forgiving with yourself when you're painting and don't be married to any of your ideas. Let the painting speak for itself and guide you. I see some of your comments. It's already looking great as it is. Thank you so much, Lainey. We have a long way to go, but I appreciate that. Hi to Brooke in Missouri. Hi Rhonda in Alabama. Okay, so we have a good base layer going on from this point. So from here, what I'd like to do is kind of step back. I, whenever I'm painting, I'll like paint up close and I routinely walk back and stand about 10 feet back from my painting and really look at what's going on. It's hard if you always stay really close and focused on it to really know what it looks like because typically people view a painting from at least six feet back. So you always have to step back and look at it. Um, all right, so from here, I wanna add in a little bit of deeper shadows in my peonies. So the way that I'm gonna accomplish that is by making kind of a blue violet color. So I have ultramarine blue from basics and I'm still gonna use that same magenta. And what I'm gonna do is just mix a little bit of the blue and the magenta and create just this kind of beautiful blue violet color. And I wanna just start not outlining, but just defining some of these shapes. If you, if that's your aesthetic and you want to go ahead and like outline every flower I've seen or every petal, I've seen other artists do that and it looks beautiful. For me, I like to just keep it kind of loose and not be perfectly outlined. Um, the whole point of my paintings is just to, I just like to be loose and really fluid with my process. So that is always my goal. can add a little bit of water to that and it'll create just a little bit more fluid of a paint. Kind of drawing some of the little veins that will come up on each petal. Oh, I'm not sure if I mentioned, I switched to uh, an even smaller paintbrush. When I'm painting in the studio, like I said, I keep a very fluid workflow. So I'll switch back and forth quickly between brushes and colors. I paint where the spirit leads me. So I am not someone that is very, um, I guess, methodical or organized in my method. When I'm teaching, I try and break it down a little bit um, so that it's easier to follow along with. But just so you know, as a painter, I have the tendency to jump from color to color, brush size to brush size. And really a lot of that comes, if you're just getting started, a lot of that just comes with practice and time and a lot of painting. Um, so knowing, you know, which brush, brush size that you need to go in. So that kind of blue violet color that I was talking about has started to mix with the white that is already on my P 
peonies and it's creating this really beautiful, like almost like a lilac shade. I think it is working for me with the shadows today. So I'm kind of trying to keep this, keep the purple shades where my shadows would be. So always keeping in mind, you know, what we know about form and where highlights and shadows are really the tricks of the trade that we use to create that, create form and to trick the eye into thinking that these peonies are jumping out at you. So whenever I'm painting flowers, I like to think of where is my light source coming from? Where, are, where is darker on the petals? Where is lighter? So darker is going to be at the base and closer in. And as it comes out, we have a lighter shades of light pink hitting them. All right, so I want to add a little, another shade of pink to my peonies. One of my favorite, favorite color combinations to mix is this, this is again Liquitex Basics, and this is light portrait pink. We'll, we will go back and try and put all of the colors that we used um, in the caption of this video. Um, and then this is a medium magenta color. So I'm gonna mix that light portrait pink and the medium magenta. And I will use, <laughs> this is a newer version of that number eight round paintbrush that I was talking about. Um, so I'm going to use that same thing and now I'm just going to mix equal parts of that light portrait pink and the medium magenta and I just want to kind of add in some chunky brush strokes of this to the centers. So this is kind of my warm pink color. So on like the centers of my petals in those mid-range tones, this is where I want to add this in to kind of bridge the gap. Now I'm going to add a little bit of white to that color and just come back in with some really clean brush strokes. I'll draw all of those outlines and then I just start coloring outside the lines and start breaking out of them. I like, like to try and just, like I said, I'm gonna say it again and again, I like to keep it as loose as I can. Sometimes I'll even like add in brush strokes way outside of what I was painting. I want some of this color reflecting in my water, so I'm just going to add a little bit of it. This is going to be a glass. I'm going to add a little bit of this light pink on the edges.
hope that y'all enjoy this little demo today. That you get something out of it. All right, so next, as I'm looking at this, I'm just gonna take a step back and I'm trying to decide if I wanna keep the background that bright or if I kind of wanna to tone it down a little bit. Not quite certain yet, so I'm just gonna keep going with my painting right now and then I'll uh, consider that after. So right now, I wanna add in some green. So I'm working with a hooker's green. This is, again, basics. I'm using all basics paints right now. These are a student grade paint. They're great. Um, but I, I work with all different brands. Elizabeth, this is like watching magic. Thank you so much. That is so sweet of you to say. Y'all are too kind. I'm almost out of this color and art supplies are hard to come by. So <laughs> these, these days, all, I, all craft stores in our area are shutting down on Monday because they are non-essential businesses. And I'm like, ah, for me, they are absolutely essential. So that's heartbreaking news, but I do want everyone to stay safe. So I understand. All right, so I'm still gonna work with that round paintbrush. And I like to kind of deepen my green. So I'm mixing a tiny bit of magenta into it make it even just a deeper shade. And I'm gonna come starting at the base of the flower and just draw a really nice chunky stem down. It's gonna kind of bend. I'll add some green that kind of cups the base of these peonies. Same thing, cupping the base of it and then just adding this chunky stem that comes down. that house the baby um i have my husband watching her right now so she is down for her nap time thank you for asking hopefully she stays napping throughout this whole demo today she's uh, just turned three months and we're so thankful because she's starting to get into more of a rhythm with her sleep patterns the first couple months were just complete chaos so we're starting to figure her out more <laughs> Okay, so I have a base for my stems now. I definitely want to add more colors into them to create more of dynamic and more dimension. Um, but I want to look at this and decide where I want my flowers to go, or my, sorry, my leaves to go. So I use leaves as filler to a composition. I think similar to a florist would use them. Um, so I'll kind of, again, take a step back and look at it and decide where I need filler um, and not just inside this arrangement, but kind of cascading downwards and into the side. I like to leave a lot of open space on my paintings um, just for the eye to rest, but I do want to interrupt that. I'm thinking I'm going to add some leaves kind of in this top, this top quadrant and then the bottom as well. So working with that round paintbrush, I still have hooker's green mixed with just a touch of magenta. I'm gonna just do some quick brush strokes for where my leaves are. I think I want one here as well more for a color interruption, even though there is a lot going on there. I don't want so much pink. I'm gonna have another leaf kind of coming down here. It's gonna go behind the painting a little bit. a little bit in front of my base. Okay. All 
All right, so from there, I'm gonna grab some yellow. Doing a lot of mixing today. So this is a cadmium yellow, deep hue. I try not to get paint on my hands because these, you know, cadmium colors are not safe to get on you. Um, in college, when I was painting with oils, I used to paint with gloves, but I just cannot handle painting with gloves anymore. So I just recommend trying to not get pigments on your hands. You don't need unnecessary exposure. But I'm gonna mix this cadmium yellow with some of the hooker's green. And I'm just gonna create a little bit lighter of a shade. I think I want even more. adding some dimension to these leaves. And then with the same color, I wanna go on top of my stems and I'm just gonna go kind of in the center center of my stem and start to create that dimension. So if you're still joining in, no worries. We are going to have this posted on the channel, I think um, directly after I wrap this up. So you can go back and watch it from start to finish. Thank you for tuning in. Okay, so from here, I'm going to wash my paper. Actually, before I do that, I like to add a little bit in the center of these. Keep them interesting. It's not all pink on peonies. All right, so from here, I'm gonna wash my brush off. And now I wanna give those just a second to dry because I don't wanna over blend them. So I'm gonna go back to my background at this point. And I want this to just be a little bit lighter. So I just touched that and it is still wet. There must've been a chunk of paint there. Um, so what I'm gonna do is just mix a little bit more white into that bright aqua, make it a little bit lighter. And then I'm also going to add a touch of that light portrait paint that I was talking about earlier. So for this base background color, I'm going to use light portrait pink, bright aqua green, and titanium white. What the pink will do is just kind of tone down that aqua a little bit still going to be aqua, but just a more tone with more tonal qualities so that it's not jumping out quite so much. You'll see what I am talking about when I put this down. Let's see. We'll go here first. Now when I go back over with, over with this color, I like to not cover up everything that I have already done. I want to do it kind of loose and it will create texture. In some places I'll leave like a little bit of an outline. See that's just a little bit more tonal. Oh, I think this is so much fun too. I'm glad that you're enjoying it, Meredith. Y'all, if you um, paint peonies today, be sure to post them and tag me on Instagram. I would love to see them. And if you are interested in a longer, more in-depth tutorial, we are um, just starting like two hour workshops and they are available for purchase on my website.
these uh, virtual painting sessions are keeping me sane right now. I feel like it's what I'm living for during this quarantine. I hope that y'all are enjoying them and feel the same way. Just trying to create a little bright spot in everybody's lives right now. Thank you so much, Katie. I am glad that you like it. So in a normal painting session, um, especially now with the baby, I have such fragmented time. I would get it to a point kind of like this, probably stop and then come back the next day and work back into it. I'm gonna keep going a little bit right now since we have some time. Baby's being good, so we'll keep painting. <laughs> Okay, so from there, I'm liking that background color a lot better right now. So I'm gonna leave that and wash that brush out. Again, step back. I pretty much always paint standing up so that I can be approaching the canvas, stepping back from the canvas. It's very um, energetic. I approach my canvases with a lot of energy and I always hope and pray that that trans translates in my work. All right, so next I'm gonna use this olive green color, or green gold. You could also mix this with um, like a lemon yellow and a green if you have that on hand. But I am gonna use it straight out of the tube today. So I'm working with a really skinny round brush right now. This has so much paint on it, I can't even see what size it is, but I believe it's like a number one. And what I want to do with this is just go on the stems and really create a highlight down the center. I feel the same way, it's something to look forward to. Oh, you are speaking the truth, Meredith. Like we are looking forward to them as well. All right, so I'm gonna add a little bit of highlights onto the edges of these leaves. You could also come down the center and create like that vein that's in the middle of it. And I am using a really light, light hand with this. I don't want big, chunky strokes. <laughs> Sometimes when I'm going in and doing like detailed work, I pretty much hold my breath while I'm doing it. Then I have to remind myself to breathe when I'm painting and relax. Okay. I feel like as I'm looking at this, I feel like I just need one more leaf down here. Like I'm not loving. Can you show up your paints on the palette? Sure. So right now, let's see where we are. Right now I'm working with this green lime green color um, and I have my skinny brush but I want to switch back to my round brush and I'm going to go back in with this hooker's green because I just am not loving that corner of the painting without one more leaf there. So what I want to do is go back in with that number eight round brush. And I'm gonna mix this magenta color with my hooker's green. And that's gonna create this like really lovely dark green shade. And then with that, I wanna do a really skinny leaf. 
So almost like it's like turned completely just to fill in this area. So just really skinny. That one turned out a lot more gray because it's mixing with my background color right now. I actually don't mind that for a base color, but I'm gonna have to go back on top of that. <laughs> Your palette cracks me up, how do you keep track? I know, right? Um, this is called being a lazy artist, y'all. <laughs> I really, I used to like painstakingly scrub my palette every day after I would paint. And now I just paint too much. So I just let it get piled up and it just literally turns into a mountain of paint. And we go in and peel the whole thing off. And like these edges are like old paint that's like dried on. <laughs> uh, I know, that's horrible. Y'all are better than me, I'm sure. All right, so I'm gonna do straight hooker's green on top of that. that a little bit more. Now I might take some of that hooker's green and kind of work back into these leaves I did first. But I feel like I need a little pop of green. I like that more. And now I'm looking and I'm like, mm, I don't love this corner without a leaf. So I'm gonna do the same thing and just add one cascading downwards here. with lime green on top of that. Okay, so we're gonna work on our base a little bit more. I'm gonna wash my brush out really well. Now, I still have that ultramarine blue on my palette. So what I'm gonna do is take a touch of this ultramarine, a touch of the bright aqua, and mix. Okay. Y'all, sorry if I'm standing in front of the canvas. I'll try and stand off to the side. It's hard to get used to not painting directly in front of the canvas. Okay, so I've mixed kind of a more tonal turquoise color. And I want to use this for my water. So I'm going to go on the bottom and just fill in around the stems very loosely. And I might even have some of that come in front of the stems a little bit to kind of break up, break up the visibility since there is water there. Then I'm gonna add a little bit of white to that color and come on top. From there, I'm going to switch back to my skinny paintbrush and I want to go in with straight bright white. I'm going to just draw a line down the side of my vase and another on the other side. From here, I cannot tell if it is straight against the I have to stand in front. make sure it's not going crooked. And then I'll add white 
on top kind of loosely. Now while I have the white with the skinny paintbrush, I like to go back on my peonies and do some really fine details. Just doing skinny lines from the tops of each petal. So as you're painting at home, just remember to always have fun with your paintings, approach your canvas with a lot of energy and joy, and it will return the favor. Learn all of your foundations of drawing, and then once you know how to draw really well with your paintings, you can go in and break all of the rules. I'm still trying to figure out how to do that anyways. I always like to tell myself I'm just practicing whatever I'm painting. Because that's at the end of the day what we're doing. We're all just practicing to get better, to improve. So, I hope that you enjoyed. While you're at home working on this, um, just like I said, allow yourself a lot of grace and forgiveness and um, just enjoy the process. If you learned something from this tutorial, um, I'd love for you to give the video a thumbs up and be sure to sign up for our live virtual classes that we have on our website. You can register for them at seabrookring.com um, under the workshops. So those will be a lot more in-depth classes. This is just a quick demo. So I hope that y'all like